They gotta get our signals working better. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we gather for worship. Here at Pea Ridge United Methodist Church, it is so good to be with you this day as we worship. And no matter where you find yourself today to worship, we thank you and we greet you in the name of Christ. A couple of announcements for us as we begin this day of worship. Hope that you picked up a copy of our Ridge Runner, or if you didn't, you saw a copy in your email. It's all redesigned, updated, modernized, and all that fun stuff. And so we hope that it makes it a little bit more easy, friendlier, uh, and so I uh, hope that you enjoyed it uh, as it came out this week. But if you didn't get a copy, it's there in the back at our welcome table. Also, for those of you who are involved in our music ministries, whether in the choir or in the bell choir, we're going to have a brief meeting after worship today to just kind of talk about where things are and kind of give you an update. So if those of you will meet kind of up here in this corner uh, right after worship, uh, and I will be with you kind of shortly thereafter just to kind of talk about things and give you some important updates about where we're going moving forward. So those of you involved in that, just kind of meet over here, and we'll talk for about five, ten minutes after worship. One other announcement. Uh, we're going to, our Wednesday Bible studies are going to continue uh, at 11 a.m. on Wednesdays. But for those of you who work, or 11 a.m. is a little tough to get to on a Wednesday morning, we're going to start a Monday evening Bible study starting at 7 o'clock on September 11th. We're going to meet in the parlor for that, and so I hope that for those of you who can't come at Wednesday mornings because we're busy or life or we just don't want to get out of bed at 11 a.m., uh, me, uh, we invite you to join us for that at 7 o'clock on, on Monday nights in the, in the parlor, so be aware of that coming up. Everything else we can peruse in Senior Bulletin, but today's a great day. Today we have gathered to be the church. All of us are part of God's church. We are all the church together. No matter who you are, no matter anything about you, you are the church. And so as we begin this day, I invite you to just think about that. And then think about what God has for you in this day. And just breathe it all in. And trust that God has something for you as we worship today. So as we begin, I invite you to stand as we are called to worship. And then join our voices as Edna and Jill lead us. Jill's going to be leading us through the soundboard. Uh, the church is one foundation. Yeah, that's what I'm getting to. <laughs> they knew where I was at. <laughs> Shout for the joy, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us sing.
sound pretty today. As we continue in worship, let us affirm our faith to God as we affirm it through the Apostles' Creed. My friends, my brothers and sisters, what is it that you believe? I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, body and a and life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory be, be to the Father. As you are, invite Evie to come forward for children's moments. <laughs> right, come on, Evie. She needed to have her bodyguards with her. <laughs> come over here. Come over here. I want you to stand right here. What do you think this is? What's that? You don't know? What do you think it could be? Is it a box? No? You want to take a look inside, see what it is? Come here. What do you think's inside it? Come, you got to get closer. What do you think it is? It's nasty. You don't see anything? Well, I see something pretty cool. We call this a baptismal font. And you know what we use it for? What do we use it for? You don't know. But we use it to baptize people, to help them to see that God loves them, and to remember that we're all part of God's journey. We're going to use this today in worship. But you know what? I want you to come over here real quick. And I know you've been baptized, but I want you to remember that you are always a child of God and remember your baptism. So every time it rains and every time you see filled water all over you, I want you to remember that God loves you. I can keep doing this all day. All right, remember that God loves you, even if we don't like water everywhere. All right, so let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for things that remind us that you always love us, even if it's the water that we don't want. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can go on the children's church.
you got to laugh, right? <laughs> Reminds me of some baptisms I've had where the, they look at you and you get, they go, huh, it's the first time I've been happy with water. <laughs> or the other times when they go, I don't know who you are that's holding me. You're not my mama. You're not my daddy. And they start screaming. <laughs> yeah, it's a blessing it, no matter what. So as we go to God in prayer, we do so in this time, knowing that we rejoice in all of us in our baptisms. We rejoice in God's presence in our lives through challenges, through hardships, through fear, through not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring. But yet we seek God in it all, knowing that God is here. So no matter what is on your heart, no matter what is on your mind, trust that God is with you and give that to God. So let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your love, for your grace, and for your work amongst us. Lord, you are holy, powerful, and true. We are amazed at how your love surrounds us, how your love guides us, how your love encourages and equips us. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you for that love that we don't deserve. And yet you love us anyways. Thank you for that love that brings us together to something more than just us. Help us to remember you today. Forgive us, God, as we gather that sometimes we think more of ourselves in this time. Forgive us of our words and our actions that we unwillingly or unintentionally do that can harm each other. Forgive us of those moments when we fall short of you. Forgive me of those moments when I fall short of you. Help us all to see your love and share your love. Help us to experience your love today as a church as we seek to do your will. Pour out your love upon us, God, in our hands, in our feet, in our words, in our actions. that we can glorify you. Pour your hope upon us, God. Turn out our fear, our anxieties, our stresses, and help us to see you at work. Help us to see you at work in our church. Help us to see you at work in our community, in our families, in our health struggles, in our life struggles. Lord, open our eyes to see you. Open our ears to see you. Open our words to see you. Because you are here now. We thank you for your presence in our lives. And your grace amongst us. Lord, pour your spirit upon us so that we may be faithful unto you. Even now, God, as we join our voices together, as we pray the prayer you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue in our worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings. God, you are wonderful, wonderful in your love, wonderful in your gifts, wonderful in how you stay present in our lives. How beautiful and how precious are you, our Lord. May these gifts express our love to you and our desire for all to know you. Through Christ we pray. Amen. <clears throat> I invite you to remain standing as we sing wonderful words of life.
standing, I invite you to hear the gospel reading for us this morning that comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, from chapter 16, beginning at verse 13. Hear these words. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And all the powers of hell will not conquer. it. And I will give you the kings of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your life and for your grace and for your hope amongst us. Lord, as we enter into this time of deep devotion and discipleship, we ask for you to open our hearts and our minds and our ears so that we may be attentive to you speaking to us. Turn out the distraction of our day and our lives so that we may focus upon you and be willing to respond to what it is that we hear from you in this moment. Lord, make me less so that you may be more. May the words of my heart and the meditation of my soul be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, the church is beautiful. There's something beautiful about the church. We gather every week all of us from different experiences of life, different perspectives, different ideologies, different politics, different jobs, different paths. But we all come together into this moment be the church. There's something beautiful about that. Something amazing and something beautiful and something powerful about that. And we all gather to be the church. This body that is beautiful and yet also scarred. We come to give honor and glory to God. And we bring our perspectives, we bring our past, we bring our presence, our future, our hopes, our dreams, our fears, all into that. With the desire to be the church. There's something beautiful and holy about that. Something beautiful and holy about that which we do and all of our brothers and sisters do week after week, whether it's on a Sunday or a Saturday or a Wednesday or a Tuesday. Something holy and beautiful about what we do together. So holy and beautiful and powerful that our creed 
said that it was so important for us to see the beauty of the church that it made it a tenant of faith. Not this optional thing that we can come to whenever the Steelers aren't playing at the 12 o'clock kickoff time or, the, or Marshall's not playing or WVU's not playing. But this thing that is bigger than us, all of us together, this beautiful thing, the church said that this is so important, we're going to put it as a bedrock tenet of our faith. And so there it is. Every week when we stand to profess our faith, we do so to say, I believe in the church. Big C Church. I believe in the movement of God known as the church. And not just any church. I believe in the holy Catholic church. In the communion of saints. Beautiful words we say every week. Powerful words, holy words, important words. Words that remind us that the church is not about the stained glass windows. Oh, how pretty they may be. That the church is not about the color of the carpets. Or the fact Jill would like to get rid of my iPhone today. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. The church is not about pastors and stoles. The church is about Jesus. But what does it mean for us to say we believe in this thing called church? What is it that makes us come? What is it that makes us wonder and ponder about what it is to be the church? Why is church so important? We ponder this as we ponder this reading from Matthew 16, where Jesus has brought his disciples together at this place called Caesarea Philippi. This is a hinge passage in the Gospel of Matthew. And what I mean by a hinge passage, it, it serves as a, as a transition or turning point in the whole Gospel of Matthew. From Matthew 4 up until now, Jesus has been doing a lot of teaching, a lot of healing. And he's been engaging the, the Pharisees and the scribes a little bit. But now he's trying to focus in on going towards Jerusalem. But before he can get focused on Jerusalem, he needs to have a conversation with his disciples. And so he takes them to this place called Caesarea Philippi that was known for Herod the great son Philip, who was one of the rulers in Galilee. But it had this history about it in that it was a place of worship for the Greek god Pan. Now, if you remember any of your Greek mythology from high school or college, you remember that Pan was one of those gods of the underworld. And there's this cave in Caesarea Philippi. It's dark, it's rusty looking, it's got these fangs of, that hang down from it that where the people in Jesus' time really thought that if you walked through that cave, you were walking through the gates of hell. Because people were worshiping a pan there. So here we have Jesus standing in this spot, somewhere around this area. He asked his disciples, who do the people say that I am? An interesting place to have a come to Jesus conversation. Well, his disciples say, well, some of you think I'm John the, that you are John the Baptist. Some of you, some think that you're Elijah and some think Jeremiah. And Jesus says, well, that's nice, but who do you think I am? He gets to the serious parts of the question now and Peter, as he's prone to do, he's bold, he's brash, he speaks sometimes without thinking. We're all guilty of that. And he says, well, you're the Messiah, you're the Christ, you're the Son of God, you are the one we've been waiting on. Now, Peter may not know exactly what it is that he just said, but he said the magic words, 
that Jesus has been looking forward to. He said those words that they were expecting. He said, you know what, Peter? Yes, I am. And because of that, what you just said, you are now called the rock. Not Dwayne Johnson, just the rock. Making sure you all are paying attention, following along. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. This is one of only two places in the whole Gospels that we actually have the word ecclesia, meaning church, in all of the Gospels. And here Jesus says, upon this foundation, I will build my church. Upon the foundation of faith. Upon the foundation of belief in God. Upon the foundation of hope in Christ. Upon the foundation of love in God, Jesus is building his church. For the church stands as that ongoing witness of Jesus Christ. That is who we are called to be as the church. We are the representatives of Christ in a broken and hurting world. We are what Jesus has birthed into to let others know who God is. We are the church, the people that God is using to let others know how great is our God. The church is built as the ongoing witness of Jesus Christ. Breathed on, loved on, because we are the bride of Christ, his beloved. And we are called to help others see who God is. Through our words, through our actions, through our witness with one another. The church stands as what God is doing in our world to point others to Jesus. To help people see that God is real. And that there is hope in our world. And so for that, we say that the church is holy. Not that we always get it right. Not that we are perfect. Not that everything about us is always going well. But we're holy because our creator and the Lord of our church, Jesus, is holy. And to be holy means to be set apart. It means to be set apart. And when we say that the church is holy, it means we're set apart to not look like the world. We're called to look different. To have different values, to have different experiences, to have a different perspective, to show people a different way than the world's anger, division, self-righteousness, self-loathing, self-hating, self-deprecation, self-focus, everything that focus inward and not outward. We're called to show people that there's a way of love, a way of creation, a way of hope, a way of joy. And we're called not to look like the world, but we're called to reflect and look like Christ. And how we love one another. And how we worship the divine. And how we speak grace into the broken and hurting aspects of our world. We're set apart. To show people that there's something different, something better than the world's anger, division, and rancor. And we're set apart and holy, but we're also Catholic. Catholic in that little C Catholic. Big C Catholic, we're talking about a specific denomination. The little c, we're talking basically the universal nature of the church. When we say that we are Catholic, we're saying that we're not just focused on what happens here at Pea Ridge United Methodist. 
or that we're not saying that the church is just us here who are gathered on Sunday morning or who may be watching us online today or later in the week. We're not saying that it's all about us. When we say that we're Catholic, we're saying it's about everybody. Catholic and Orthodox. Progressive and traditionalist. Methodist and Baptist. Presbyterian and Lutheran. We recognize that the church needs all of us. And that we're all in this together as the communion of saints. The body of Christ, the people of God who are seeking to love God, grow in faith, and serve the Lord. Both here on earth and also in heaven. When we say we're Catholic, we're saying that we have to work together. Share love together. That we pray for each other because we recognize we're all brothers and sisters in Christ together. The church is built on that faith and that hope and that joy of God. The church is built on that foundation of Christ and Christ alone. And when we get that right, when we get it right that we're holy, set apart, when we get it right that we're Catholic, when we get it right that our foundation is based on, the, on our faith in Christ, there's some powerful and beautiful things that can happen. When we get that right, lives are transformed. People begin to see God at work in their lives in a new way. Worship becomes deeper and powerful in life giving. Worship doesn't end on Sunday morning at 12 o'clock, it continues. And how we care in our world, how we work, how we talk to each other. When we get the focus of the church right, our focus is outward to say, how can we take the love of Christ that happens here and take it to those who may not know God loves them? But when we get it wrong, when we get that focus wrong, when we're more focused about ourselves than we are of God, when we're more focused about the collar of the pew, and the stains in the carpet that we used an iPhone instead of the jump drive for worship. If the pastor is wearing a stole or not. When we focus more inward than outward, we get it wrong. And when we focus more on ourselves than less on God, when the church becomes more about us than it does about God, we can cause a lot of hurt. And we can cause a lot of pain. I don't know about you, but I've seen the church cause a lot of pain and a lot of hurt over my years. I've seen it myself, and I pray to God I probably have caused a few over the years. When you get it wrong, it hurts. But oh, how beautiful it is when the church gets it right. Oh, how beautiful it is when the church focuses it on God. How powerful it is when the church gets it right. We're not a club. We're not a building. We don't exist to make me happy. We don't exist to put money in the offering plate or the offering basket in our case. 
We don't exist to fill up every pew in this church. We don't exist for the past. We don't exist for the future. We exist for one reason and one reason only. To love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. When the church gets it right, watch out. Because it will be a powerful thing to witness. Let us be the church that gets it right. Will you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for your love, for your grace, and for your hope amongst us. Lord, help us to be your church. Help us to be a witness of your faith and your love. But Lord, help us to get it right. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Well, as we continue our worship today, we have a great way of celebrating and sharing love and the great joy of welcoming a new member, not just to this church, but to the kingdom of God through profession of faith and the sacrament of baptism. So I'm gonna invite everyone who's a part of that to come forward at this time as we enter into this time of holy sacrament around the baptismal font. So brothers and sisters in Christ, it is through the sacrament of baptism we are initiated in Christ's holy church we are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. I joyfully present Jacina Jascott for both baptism and confirmation. This is Jacina, by the way. Say hi. <laughs> Everyone say hi back. You'll have a chance to fully do it later, but, you know, making sure that we all are, know each other. We'll introduce you later. <laughs> so, just, you know, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spirit, spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. I do. Now, congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Jacina now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and, and live, live according, according to the example of Christ. We will surround her with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that, that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. As a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church do all in your power to strengthen its ministries. Will you be faithful through your prayers, gifts, service, presence, and witness? If so, say, I will. I will. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing else existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. The children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing, Sing to, to the, the Lord, Lord all, all the earth. earth. Tell, Tell of God's, God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and, make, and to make disciples of all nations. 
Declare Christ's works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pray out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Jacina, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that you may always know that you are a child of God and a person of sacred worth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now it's our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Through baptism, you are now incorporated in the church and we celebrate you. And the church is now going to celebrate you now. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we greet people after church, but this is for you. A little certificate and also a Bible to, for you on this day. It's got the date of the baptism inside. But before you sit down, we need you to introduce everyone to this. You know, I, I love that there's someone else here that's bald. <laughs> They'll be in the back for you to greet after worship. And so, what a great day to be the church. And what a great day to celebrate. And so let us continue that celebration as we stand and sing our closing hymn.
picture. I got to explain the joke that I gave to Jill a little bit earlier. Uh, our, Jill is technically our pianist today. So we want to thank Jill for being our pianist. In reality, she just hit the play button for all the music that I downloaded. And of all people in this church, not to let play with an iPhone, it would be Jill. <laughs> and Jill had to learn how to play with an iPhone today because one of the songs wouldn't play on our soundboard, but it would play on the iPhone. So I had some fun as an iMac person having our IBM person play with an iPhone. <laughs> I'm not going to say that that was intentional or not. But as we go forth, go with this benediction. Go and be the church. That's who you are. So go be the church. Go tell people how amazing God is. Go tell people how amazing Jesus is. Go serve. Go love. Go be the church. And let everyone know how great is our God. Name the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. amen.